So today we're going to discuss the OK sign. The OK sign is kind of an opposite sign. It's the inability to make this motion, this OK motion, uh, which requires the ability to touch the tips of the thumb and index finger together. So this young lady here uh, has a normal left hand and she's trying to make this exact same motion with her right hand, but she can't flex these two joints. So she winds up touching the pads of those fingers together, the pads of the index finger and the thumb, and it sort of makes a triangle. So uh, the OK sign <coughs> is um, classically associated with anterior interosseous neuropathy. Now the anterior interosseous is a very important branch of the median nerve. Uh, it travels through the brachial plexus along with the median nerve, descends uh, with the median nerve as part of the median nerve uh, through the upper arm down to the level of the pronator teres, which is about here. Uh, the pronator teres has two heads, a superficial and a deep head, and the median nerve dives between those two heads of the pronator teres, and at about that point, the anterior osseous branch splits off and runs down the forearm uh, along the interosseous membrane, that's where it gets its name, um, as a separate branch from the main trunk of the median. So <coughs> um, the anterior interosseous uh, innervates certain very specific muscles. It innervates the flexor pollicis longus, which allows you to flex the IP joint of the thumb. It innervates the flexor digitorum profundus to the index finger and the middle finger, but the middle doesn't come into play as much. It's, not, it's harder to see that phenomenon. But the index finger, it flexes the DIP joint of the index finger. So it allows you to flex those two joints and touch them together. So that's what the antinorosseus does. Uh, it can be involved in several different uh, disease processes. Um, <clears throat> This young lady here uh, had uh, neuralgic amyotrophy, brachial plexitis, Parsonage-Turner syndrome, goes by all those names. And sometimes patients who have neuralgic amyotrophy present with uh, a deficit that's most pronounced. Sometimes it's only in the distribution of the anterior osseous nerve. I knew that this young lady had a brachial plexus level lesion that she had neuralgic amyotrophy because she had the anterior osseous deficit, but she also had atrophy and weakness in the suprascapular nerve distribution. So it really was a multiple mononeuropathy from branches of the brachial plexus. Um, but that was what was going on with her. Uh, so the anterior osseous uh, runs through the upper arm in the uh, median nerve as one of the major fascicles of the median nerve. This young man here, well, this young man is my fellow. Uh, this is his patient, and uh, this man developed uh, an anterior osseous syndrome after having retrograde brachial arteriography. That's not something that we do anymore. Uh, but once upon a time, uh, radiologists would insert a catheter into the upper arm here uh, insert the catheter into the brachial artery and then inject contrast retrograde to outline the uh, cerebrovascular uh, system. But injuries to the median nerve don't always involve the entire median nerve. In, in this man's uh, case, the deficit was most severe in the anterior osseous distribution, even though we knew that the lesion involved the main trunk of the median nerve. Uh, due to it was a hematoma that developed after this uh, arteriogram. So the hematoma uh, compressed the median nerve, but the deficit that appeared was mostly in the anterior osseous distribution, which is not that uncommon. That Those fascicles seem to be very uh, vulnerable, very susceptible to injury, maybe more so than the other fascicles of the median nerve. Um, <clears throat> so that was the retrograde brachial angiogram. This is the same patient, uh, and he's trying to uh, make a fist, you can see that he does it okay with his uh, middle and ring and small fingers, but he can't flex the index finger. Now, if, if he had a main trunk median nerve, uh, he wouldn't be able to uh, flex his, um, his index finger or any of the other fingers 
He wouldn't be able to do, he wouldn't be able to flex any of these fingers. He would have uh, abduction weakness of his thumb. Uh, he would have weakness of flexion of his wrist, as well as sensory loss in the distribution of the median nerve. So that's the, the difference between the way a median nerve lesion looks and the way an anterior, anterior interosseous uh, lesion looks. We thought um, for years that when a patient had an anterior interosseous deficit in the absence of any other deficit, the lesion was usually in the brachial plexus and it was the manifestation of neuralgic amyotrophy. But uh, imaging studies, uh, high contrast, uh, high resolution MRI, studies done about 10 years ago uh, showed clearly uh, that in patients who have uh, antineurosis uh, syndrome, the lesion is most often in the main trunk of the median nerve in the upper arm, somewhere here. Those fascicles uh, light up on an MRI in patients who have antineurosis neuropathy. So the actual number of patients who have pronator teres syndrome where antineurosis neuropathy develops at the level of the pronator teres, those are probably pretty rare. And things that we used to think were pronator teres syndrome probably were really autoimmune mediated antineurosis fasciculopathies, i.e. involving the antineurosis fascicles in the body of the median nerve in the upper arm. So that's the okay sign.